Hey everyone, today we are going to be looking at the return on assets, okay? And uh, we'll be looking at two specific um, returns, uh, those being the dollar return and the percentage returns, okay? So we're going to have a look at these types of returns that we receive from an asset. Okay, so let's look at the return on assets. So a return by definition is the gain or loss on an investment, okay? We make an investment, we buy an asset that we hope for it to you know, generate some sort of revenue. Our return can be a gain or something can go wrong, like a financial crisis for an example, and there can be a loss as well, okay? But let's first start by um, looking at what dollar return is. So put simply, let's say we have this closed contour right here, and this represents our return, okay? But this return is made up of two things, all right? It's made up of something known as capital gains, capital gains, and also something known as income. So these are the two primary um, constituents of our return. Okay, so what are capital gains? Well, the best way for me to explain what capital gains, gains is is probably through houses because houses are something that um, increase in value as time goes on. Let's say you buy a house for $500,000. Okay, you buy a house for $500,000 right here. Well, as you should know, as time progresses, more or less the price of these houses will increase, okay? So it'll increase to a new price. And if you were to sell that house at time one, we'll call this time zero, which represents today, and we were to sell this house in time one when there was a capital, um, there was an increase in the value of the house, then that difference you make is what is known as a capital gain. Okay, that's what capital gains is. And income, on the other hand, is um, is a return in the form of dividends. You know, um, money that is generated by the asset. Okay, without you giving the asset away, right? You you hold something as shares, for example. Shares are a great example. You hold on to shares, and um, every period, every set of periods, you'll get paid a dividend, and that dividend comes under income okay so these are the two subsets of return we get capital gains and we get income and what we do is we add these two things together and our um, results will be the return so let's do an example the example here says I'm going to buy shares for ten dollars okay that's fair enough and the share will pay three dollars in dividends next year Shares will be worth $12 in one year. What is your return on this investment? So it's fairly simple, fairly simple. Let's just first start off by writing what our return should be equal to the formula. Our return is equal to capital gains plus income. Okay, so what will the capital gains be? Well, the capital gains will be 12 minus 10. Okay, we buy it for $10, but we're going to sell it for 12. And that difference will represent our capital gains. And the income generated by this asset, which are, which are shares, will be um, $3. Okay, $3. And so our total return on this investment will be 2 plus 3, and that's equal to 5. Okay, so our return on these shares was $5. Alright, um, but what will we have in total after we sell these shares? Well, it's pretty obvious that um, if we bought the shares for 10, sell them for 12, sure our return is 5, but we'll actually be getting 12 plus three dollars all right twelve plus three dollars we sell it for twelve and um, including this ten 
in our, to our calculations, we only have to consider the income. And so, we'll have $15 when we sell all of our shares um, in one year's time. Okay? Now, the next thing we want to look at are percentage returns. All right, percentage returns. Now, why do we look at this specific type of return? Well, this, this um, alternative way of viewing uh, this return is it can tell us more information. Okay, it can tell us more information about the investment we are engaging in. Okay, my ret and furthermore, it will tell you my return or your return for every dollar I have invested. Okay, so that's a very good thing that we can keep in mind. And the percentage return does just this. So if we, if using our figures on the last page, if we want to calculate the percentage return, what we do is we put the um, capital gains. and income over the amount invested. All right, so it's basically our return over the amount invested. We know that our return was $5, and we know we initially invested $10. Okay, and so our percentage return, so we have to times this by 100 to get our percentage. Our percentage return is 50%. But what does this mean? Because this is also equal to um, 1 half, and that's equal to 0 0.5. So this furthermore means that we get 50 cents for every dollar invested in shares okay that's fairly straightforward and so that's I guess um, the idea behind percentage return it gives us this piece of information that um, dollar return wouldn't explicitly give us and it, it's nice to know how much we're getting for every dollar we invest and that concludes this lesson Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.